What Anthony and I did, let me just skip past all the math here, even though the math was kind of fun, was to prove it a little theorem and, and, and reached the very surprise, to us, a very surprising conclusion. So I'm trying to summarize in this picture here. So, the old school way of, of thinking about this, let's assume also that Bruce has bet bet a thousand dollars that he's going to measure spin up. Okay, and, he, and since he plays his bets well, he, the initial state was such that he figured he had a two-thirds chance of winning. Okay, so when he comes out big, you're expecting him to be happy in two-thirds of all the cases. The old school way of thinking about it was there's only one Bruce, one planet. Initially, he doesn't know what's going to happen, and then in the Copenhagen interpretation, the wave function collapses. It loses with probability one-third, wins with probability two-thirds. On the other hand, if there is no collapse, and Everett is right, then this is what happens. There will be these two parallel universes, one in which he's happy, one in which he's sad, and in some funky sense, this one is, two, is twice as real as that parallel universe. And we're supposed to be able to stomach that. But in this new picture, if Andre Linde is right, the initial state isn't this. The initial state is like this. We have all these different planets. I put them not to scale here. <laughs> A lot closer together. And then afterwards, well, what's going to happen now? In the, in the Copenhagen interpretation, you, flip, you do some quantum randomness separately for each planet. Definite outcome on each one, and, and Bruce is going to win on, and be happy on two thirds of them and lose one third of them. In the Evan interpretation, all outcomes happen. Yeah. How many are there? There are a lot of outcomes. The two possibilities for the first planet, two for the second, and so there's two for the third, two times two times two, infinitely many possible outcomes. I've labeled every outcome for, for what happens in space as a little strip like this. Okay? So either you got this happening on all the planets, or this happening on all the planets, or this happening on all the planets, etc. Now, here's just the first shocking thing we realize is actually, it turns out that all of these outcomes are identical. Whoa! But here the outcomes were not at all identical. Here they are. Let me elaborate a little more on exactly what. what what the theorem shows. And uh, if you have a wave function, and when you have another wave function, they're both vectors in the Hilbert space. You can take these functions. You can, if you subtract them from each other, and you, you take the, the norm of the difference, so you, you, you take the square of the difference of the functions and you integrate it. If you get zero, that means that they're the same wave function. That's what Hilbert space is. Okay? So if we if we do that here, and if we're willing to neglect any part of the wave any little component of the wave function with norm zero, then it it turns out that everything that's left is just a superposition of completely independent spaces. And every one of these space outcomes, you have a classical space with exactly any precision you want, one-third of the planets being places where Bruce lost, and two-thirds of the planets being places where he won. So, the whole quantum business of this kind of went away, and, and the, the whole origin of the probability, one-third, it comes from just planet counting. You'd say, what, what fraction of all the planets have this outcome versus the, that outcome? And the whole quantum weirdness, which I like to call it with the level 3 multiverse, the quantum multiverse, turns out it didn't actually matter which one of the quantum parallel universes you were in, because they were all the same. So, so this is kind of, yeah? I just wanted to give a new interpretation for collapse of the wave function. So you, you take one of those and then you shift it along until they match up, and then you paste them together. <laughs> right, so, so in this view, so you, you sort of collapse the wave function on each planet. But, but you don't have to think of it that way. I think. You can think of all of those terms as basically being the same, and so now distinguishing the, them as being separate terms in a 
in a superposition doesn't really make sense. That's right. So, so, there, there, so there is, sorry, if, if Andre is right and space really is infinite like this, there is actually some uh, major changes for both the Everett interpretation and the Copenhagen interpretation. Both of them have a little bit of a... So let's look at this a bit more clearly. The Copenhagen interpretation, the, the whole point of inventing the wave function collapse was to get rid of these annoying parallel universes. You wanted a definite outcome, right? Well, if Andre is right, that fails anyway. So you didn't gain anything. You start out with, with many planets with Bruce on. You might not be bothered by that because they're all identical. But at the end, you have, you have the same number of planets you started with, but different outcomes on each one. So, so there's no way of disputing that there is, you're stuck with a parallel universe here, even in the Copenhagen interpretation. Okay. And in the Everett interpretation, on the other hand, where you, where when you make such a big deal about the fact that the wave function never collapsed, and we're now telling saying well, that it actually that the collapse doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it collapses or not. It's an anticlimax. Because the collapse just means you take one of those strips and you pick it out as real, and you discard all the other ones and say they're not real. Well, it doesn't matter which one you pick, because they're, they're all the same. And um, another way you can think about this is that this, co this, this cosmological interpretation of quantum mechanics, as you might call it, it, it answers the question of where are these many worlds of quantum mechanics by saying they're just out there in, in our physical three-dimensional space in a way that kind of brings it down close to home. And it, any interpretation has to answer the question, what does the wave function really mean? You now people like to argue about whether the wave function describes reality or whether it just describes our information about reality or whatever. In this picture, one would say that that uh, the quantum uncertainty is simply that, first of all, there is an ensemble, but it's not some kind of fictitious ensemble that's just a good document. It's a real ensemble. It's Andre's ensemble. It's all those other copies of me out there in the infinite space. And the wave function describes you know, this whole ensemble. And quantum uncertainty, what's that? Well, it's just my un subjective uncertainty as to which of the many maxes I am. There's no, even if I know the whole state of everything, there's no way for me to know which one of these is, is this, this me. And it, it leads to all these um, puzzling things. Isn't it depressing? <laughs> that you never know your identity. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to shut up now, uh, because the whole purpose of saying these things wasn't to try to sell you a bill of goods, it was just to try to get you thinking about these various questions and to provoke you quite a bit. So let me say that I don't think quantum mechanics is depressing, I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now I want to hear what you think about it. Where's the, the thank you. Where's the camera to the mic? This number? Yeah. Which is simply there to illustrate the fact that you don't even need Andre to make it completely infinite. If Andre just makes a really, really big space, we would say, um, so that there's, say, 10 to the power of 1,000 copies of me, say, and then suppose I want to insist on having the quantum mechanics give the right, exact right probabilities here to 100 decimal places. Then I pick, that means in this formula is we put epsilon equal to 10 to the minus 100. Then the quantum norm of the thing which you have to throw away, where the, where the, where the probabilities don't come out to be right with to, to 100 decimal places, is 10 to the minus 10 to the 800, which is really absurdly ridiculously small. So it, so it might be that even if space isn't really infinite, but you just get inflation for a long, long time. <laughs>